Father, we thank you for this another opportunity, another opportunity to minister to these your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 24. Last week we began talking about overcoming approval addiction, which uh, appears to be a, a pretty big foundation for a whole lot of other things to, to, to operate in people's lives. For example, if you live under a burden of guilt, if you live under a burden of shame or condemnation, if you experience feelings of insecurity, uh, experience some unworthiness, low self-esteem, low self-worth, if you have an excessive need for approval, if you have an excessive need for validation, for acceptance from other people to make you feel valued, you're most likely an addict. What type of addict? An approval addict, addicted to approval. Because you fear rejection and you fear judgment, you fear disapproval from others to the point where you try your best to avoid from rocking the boat at all costs. It's the scariest thing that you could experience the fact that if, if I don't gain their approval, I'm probably going to have to deal with feelings of a low self-esteem because I depend on the approval of others to determine the value I'll have of myself. Now, that is involved in a lot of arenas, including the pulpit, including Christians, a lot of arenas in this area of, in the day and time of social media, needing the approval of the social media platform with the comments and the shares. And uh, it's all over our country where you are willing to do almost anything to gain the validation and the approval from somewhere else because you depend on that. Now, that's the deal. Of course, it's fine to, to crave the approval of your parent and even to crave the approval of God, but to crave the approval of other people for the sake of your self-worth, that's when it becomes a problem. For the sake of your self-worth, that you have to be accepted by those people and not understand that God already accepts you. It's huge. And in some cases, if that approval isn't given and I continue to allow myself to be validated by that type of approval, then I could become angry. It, it, it causes mental sickness. Uh, I, I may even want to go out and shoot somebody because I feel that bad. That I'm just not getting it from anywhere. And so, this is a very important subject, and I'd like to begin in the text we started off with last week and, and just go pick up last week's and get that, and I'm going to kind of continue on today for the sake of time. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 24, we see King Saul allowing approval addiction to derail his whole call of, in life. His, it derailed the whole plan that God had for his life. And God had spoken to Saul, and there was a situation going on. He sent him to a certain place, and he said, I want you to destroy everything. I want you to kill every animal, all the cattle, all the people, all the children. Do it all. And King Saul was like, well, but, but what about the people? Here's what we're going to do, you know. We're just going to do what we normally do. We'll, we'll, we'll keep the best of, our, of it all, because it was a tradition that when you went into battle, you would get the best of everything. 
And when, when Samuel showed up, Saul said, I've done everything that you've told me to do. I've obeyed the word of the Lord. And, and Samuel said, well, what meaneth this bleeding I hear in my ear? If you did what I told you to do and obeyed the commandment of God, I wouldn't be hearing animals. What's, what's all this? And he kept giving more excuses. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 27, he says, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord <laughs> and thy words, because I feared the people, and I obeyed their voices. I feared the people, and I obeyed their voices. Another translation says this, I was afraid of the people, and so I gave in to them. King Saul lost his relationship with God because he was addicted to approval. He lost his kingdom. He's, he lost his relationship with his son, Jonathan. And he explains to us why. I was afraid of the people, so I gave in to them. Like, what do you mean you're afraid of the people? You're the king. I mean, he had nothing physically to fear from them. In fact, they adored him. In fact, they actually idolized him. And he sought their approval so much that he wouldn't make any decision he thought might reap their disapproval. Have you ever been there? I'm so afraid to, to, to say no. I'm so afraid to go against something because I don't want their disapproval of me. And no one had, no one had threatened King Saul. No one was asking him to do anything. At this point, all of this stuff was in his head. Like a lot of people today, and nobody even said nothing, but a lot of stuff can get in your head. They don't like me because of what I wear. They don't like me because of where I live. A, a lot of stuff in your head. But what he thought could happen dominated him. And today, a lot of us, what we think could happen to us, it dominates us. They might not like us. They might not approve of us, and it dominates your thinking. His approval addiction caused him to act foolishly, and he ultimately compromised his future because of his approval addiction. Now, this is big. This is something that as Christians, we would like to sit here and say, I don't have that problem. And yet, as I took an account of my life, I certainly did. I wanted the approval of my church. I wanted the approval of the conferences that I went through. I wanted the approval of, 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 the, of the famous preachers and the big-time folks. I wanted their approval. And in some cases, when God told me to preach a certain thing, I'm like, oh, but this will displease them. And to compromise the instructions of God to please people will derail you. So this is why I have no problem standing up and teaching on what God said about tithing. I knew it was going to displease a lot of people. But I got to see Jesus. This is why I decided to take a shift and begin to teach on the grace of God and the gospel of the grace of God. I knew it would displease a lot of people. But it's God telling me to do that. For me not to do what God commanded me to do, I would be in the same position as King Saul, and my life and ministry would be derailed because I'm wondering about what the body's going to think about Creflo Dollar. I tell you, the greatest deliverance I ever had in my life was deliverance from people. And the greatest deliverance you'll ever have in your life is deliverance from people. And I promise you, when God puts it on my heart, I'm going to say it. We'll work out all of those stuff later. And, 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 and I love people so much, they, they'll get mad at me and call me and say they're going to leave me, and two weeks later they write back. They say, well, I don't agree with it, but I ain't going nowhere because I love you and I wouldn't be where I was today without you. God knows how to take care of all that. What is it that he has spoken to you to do? 
How has he wired you to accomplish a call in your life? Your greatest answered prayer may be a result of you recognizing, I am addicted to approval. God, deliver me from it so I can stay on course because approval addiction will knock you off course. John chapter 12, verse 42 and 43, there were Pharisees that believed in Jesus' word, and they believed what he spoke, but they would not follow Jesus for fear that the other Pharisees would be displeased with them. That same thing happens today. There are people that God has called to world changes ministry, but they're not going to come here in College Park because it may displease their family, it may displease their friend, it may displease their co-worker to say, I'm at Creflo Church. <laughs> and the same thing is true where the division issue is concerned, that maybe a white man will not submit to a black guy. Black folks love submitting to a white guy, but they won't submit to a black guy. Oh, was I too strong with that? That's the truth. But it's all because of approval addiction. I want the approval of people I hang around, and I don't want to displease them. So I will, I will neglect what God's telling me to do. I'll neglect where he's telling me to go because I want the approval of the others. And so you're derailed. What was it that God was going to do with you at that white church? What was it that God was going to do with you at that Jewish synagogue? What was it that God was going to do with you? I never went, remember when God told me, to, he said, go to a Catholic church and preach this. And I'm like, who? <laughs> There's a Catholic church in, in Chicago, an all-white Catholic church in Chicago. I went up there, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I, I, I don't know what to do. He said, do what I told you to do. Oh, okay. And I have you know, oh, glory to God. I had to repent and change my mind about the Catholics. They got up there, they started waving their hand, and when they said amen, it scared me. They said, amen, brother. I was like, oh, Lord have mercy. We finna have some church up here right now. And I, I, I got up there and I gave a little jerk and, and then the, and I, I said, oh, no, no. See, you don't know how God will use you. Do not let approval addiction stop you from getting where God wants you to be. So what is approval addiction? Once again, someone who relies on the approval of others for their self-esteem and their self-worth. It's much like people pleasers. Approval addiction is the excessive need for validation and acceptance from others. And approval addiction can be damaging to a person's self-esteem, even more so. It can be damaging to their self-worth, even more so and it can lead to anxiety. Think of this, approval addiction can lead to anxiety, it can lead to depression, and it can lead to other mental health issues. And you do not want to allow yourself to get in, in that. And the thing we gotta learn how to do is, is get the approval from God. Amen? John 12 and verse 43 in the NLT, let me show you a few scriptures before we move on. Because people who have an approval addiction they are afraid of rejection. They are afraid of saying no. No becomes a problem. You have an approval addiction. You, somebody asks you to do something you don't want to do. You're afraid to say no. Well, you know, like they say, you're going to come, you're coming to church tomorrow. Uh, you don't want to say no. You say, you say, I'll try. And I'll try is an honest lie. You know you weren't going to come. <laughs> you apologize too much. You know, you fall down the steps and jump up and apologize to everybody. <laughs> you have low self-esteem. You feel anxious about what other people think of you. You go along in order to get along. Those are some symptoms of people who have a, have a problem with this addiction. Verse 43, John 12, 43 in the NLT, 
he says, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. And you can't love human praise more than you love the praise of God. Look at 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 4 in the NLT. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 4 in the NLT. See, what I really want you to get out of this series is, okay, if I'm going to please anybody, let me please God. Okay? Verse 4 says, for we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our heart. Say out loud, I please God. I please God. Amen. Right, now watch this next verse. 2 Timothy chapter 2.15 in the NLT. 2 Timothy 2.15 in the NLT. I'm showing you this because I want you to see this is not just a psychological issue, it is a biblical issue. He said, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive, the, receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly ex explains and, uh, the word of truth. Basically, what I'm saying here is if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for God's approval. I'm after God's approval. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all going to die one day. Please understand that. We're all going to die one day, and when we, when we step out of this physical body and we're absent from the body and present with the Lord, I, I mean, do you actually think it's going to matter, the fact that you, you work hard to please people? I, I want to please God. I, I don't want to stand before God with regret that I spent all my life trying to, uh, to please people. Now, there, there's a... There's a a, a right, healthy perspective of, of approval, you know? And like I said, you, you crave the approval of parents and, 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 you, and you crave the approval of God. I mean, Jesus was baptized and, 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 a dove, and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased or I'm, I, I, I approve of him. But I'm talking about the type of approval that you depend on to determine your self-worth. I'm talking about the type of approval you depend on to determine your self-esteem. So if, you don't, if your approval level is low, your self-esteem is low. Seriously? For people who don't pay your bills, for people who don't feed you, for people who are not there for you, are you serious? Is it that serious? And then you meet Waldo at McDonald's somewhere, and then you're trying to get Waldo to approve of you, and you don't even know Waldo. Waldo ain't got no job. Waldo ain't doing... Hey, hey, Waldo, Waldo ain't, ain't, he ain't got no car. You met him at the gas station, but he ain't got no car. <laughs> you're laughing, but that's how ridiculous it, it, it is sometimes as, as we look at the effort that we're putting in to please others and not understanding how important it is to please God. And here's the deal with God. You don't have to do too much to please God. Why? Because he's already pleased. The day you believed was the day he was pleased. He approved you that day. And now you got these platforms that are out there. And, oh, my goodness. You, you got a Facebook platform, and that thing could almost crush you. You have a Facebook platform, your friends, they got 500 followers. Oh, they've got 600 followers, and you got three followers. <laughs> and you are about to enter into depression because somehow or another you think that that, that, that that determines your value. They call them friends. They are not your friends. They're people who don't have nothing else to do. <laughs> and your children, God bless us. You try to help me preach every Sunday, but I got it again, babe. I love you. <laughs> I, got, I got this one. I'm, I tell you, I, I tell you when I need help, and then you can come on up here and help me. But right now, I got this. <laughs> bless her heart. It is something that we've got to watch over where our children are concerned. Our kids sitting there with that box, and they were real happy, and then they got that box, and all of a sudden, something happens. They come and eat dinner. I don't want nothing to eat. Boy, who are you talking to? <laughs> they just got rejected from people they don't even know. 
and it's affecting the moral fabric of our society. You never can tell. Some of these shooters used to be alive. Now they're now they, now they, they dying. They're knocking them off. But the ones that are alive, if you look at the trauma of rejection they have had trying to seek somebody that will tell them you're okay, I approve of you, I am pleased with you. That's a basic human need. And if they don't have a mother and they don't have a father and nobody's saying that, then they go and they try to get the approval from the gang. And the gang says, we will approve of you if you go shoot somebody. It doesn't take a rocket science scientists to try to figure out what's going on in this society, but we've got to have a little willingness to go to God, get some wisdom, and make some adjustments, and not try to hold on to stuff because we've always held on to it. This is a whole different makeup right now. I apologize for hollering like that, but that's, that's when I get excited. I start screaming and hollering and then get home and wish I hadn't screamed and hollered so much. <laughs> I'm amazed at the lives that are being destroyed and derailed over the effort of trying to earn approval from people that you don't even know, trying to buy things so that they can approve of you with money you don't even have, and trying to impress somebody who don't care. The United States of America filled with addicts who are addicted to approval to determine their value. One day God delivered me and he says, which is more important, the shouts and screams of a congregation to show their approval of what you're saying? Or the silence and the peace and affirmation that you get from the Holy Spirit because you said what I told you to say? I tell you, tapping out free. We gracefully bowed out of the rat race of trying to be the most successful ministry on the planet. That can't be determined down here. That's going to be determined when you get up there, bro. Your definition of success and God's definition of success, drastically different. Are you listening to me? Some causes of approval addiction. And often, we said last week in closing that it often stems from a person's upbringing or social environment, but we gave you a couple of them. Number one, a lack of self-esteem and self-worth. I mean, when an individual doesn't feel good about themselves, they will seek the validation and the approval of others to fill that void that's in their life. And then secondly, I mentioned it, social media may be a cause of approval addi addiction. It's in, it's in the likes that I'm feel valued. It's in the comments that I feel valued. It's in the shares that I feel valued. And then you, you get addicted to that. If you don't believe me, check your screen time at the end of the week and see how it just continues to grow. People who use social media platforms as a way to seek approval often feel validated by the numbers of likes and comments that they receive. And if it's not what they want, they are willing to compromise and to do even more and to show even more and to say even more. And you won't, you won't confess that you're addicted to your phone, and yet you, you have discovered that you wake up and the first thing you grab is that a phone and check out to see, has anybody approved of me today? Or to scroll up to see, how can I compare myself with somebody else? You're comparing your beauty with somebody else. You're beautiful and you don't even know it because you're comparing yourself with a, a painted-up individual that don't even look like that when she take all that makeup off. <laughs> she don't even look like that. You're comparing your body with somebody else's body who got some kind of bodysuit on. <laughs> you honestly don't think eyelashes grow that long, do you? <laughs> Surely you can't think that.
And it, <laughs> but somehow we do. Back in the day when I was growing up, you knew who had nappy hair, and you knew you, and you knew who had good hair. Today, everybody got good hair. It's all good. Everybody got that specially imported hair from India. It's, it's all good. And I ain't got no problem with that. I do if you are using it because you are battling with your self-worth and you're saying, I have got to look like that image in order for me to feel good about myself. Honey, until you can take the wig off, take the eyelashes off, take the bodysuit off, and look at yourself in the mirror and say, I like you just like you are. Do you like yourself? I had to learn how to like me. There were so many people who didn't like me, and there were a whole lot that loved me, but some didn't. I had to learn how to like me. I couldn't, I couldn't buy in on what those few were saying. But isn't it amazing how it can be one or two, and it can get in your one or two people tell you you ugly. And you just, you just need to understand, I'm not trying to look any kind of way for you, Mr. Who I don't know. Because <laughs> you're not hugging me when I need a hug. You're not paying my bills. Y'all got to, you just got to come back to the reality of this because it's like this big mirage, this big, this big fable, fake thing, and you're buying it. You're believing it. But I better, I better say what they want me to say or they're going to cancel me. You know how many times I done been canceled? <laughs> so, so what did you do? I just uncanceled myself. <laughs> Somebody said, how did that work? I just, I just, I don't want to be canceled. Move. And I am just keep doing and doing what I got to do. Because when you are secure in Jesus, and you know that you are an apple of his eye, when you know that you've been accepted in the beloved, that's all you need. Everything else is worth ignoring because you're headed towards the one who sits high and looks low. That when that day comes, you'll be so glad you chose him over everything else. And that's what counts. People are dying. The question is, are you ready to die? If you were to die today, please think with me now. If you, are, if, if you were to die today, think about, you're on your deathbed. You're not thinking about how many comments you got. You're on your deathbed. You're not thinking about who didn't like what you wore. Because that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what you do for Christ. That's the only thing that matters. See, your time here versus eternity somewhere else, it's, are you serious? Your time here, this, this, this is, is short and it, oh, it's over. And then eternity with him. I'm investing in something that's a whole lot more longer than this time. And I'm good, man. I'm good. You're looking at a free pastor that I'm not up here trying to, I, I ain't got no show no more. We close the circus down, put all the clowns out. I, 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 just, I just feel, I feel all right with being just who God made me. I will not exchange the power of authenticity for something that is fake and something that's not mine and something that God didn't give to me. Quit exchanging your authentic self for some cheap somebody else. It's cheap because that ain't you. 
Find out how you walk. Find out how you talk. Find out how you carry on. And if somebody calls you a nerd, you just ain't for them. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, <laughs> I ain't going to call you no nerd. You're that way because God wired you that way and he'll hook you up with other people that's wired the same way and y'all don't see each other in, in a demeaning factor. Y'all just look at each other like, oh, we wired the same way. Don't let somebody's name calling of you be something that you actually take on as, as real. You different from that person. If they can't accept you the way you are, then maybe y'all don't need to be hanging out together. There is somebody like you somewhere that gets you and they understand you and they will celebrate you. All right. All right, let's get to it today. Somebody said, I, I, you just started, you, you, I thought you'd been preaching. No, that was all summary, trying to make sure I catch some of y'all up. See how much you missed last week. All right, now watch this. Let's talk about ways to be free from approval addiction. I think you get it now, but how, to, how, how, how do we get free from this? Now, like everything that, need, that, you, that you're wanting to be free from, there is this first primary and most important step, and it is this. You've got to locate yourself. You've got to recognize that you have a problem. As long as you don't recognize that you have a problem, we're just stuck until you recognize you have a problem. It's not enough for your parents to say you have a problem. It's not enough for your best friends to say you have a problem. You have to recognize you have a problem. You have to locate yourself. Before you got born again, you had to first of all realize that you were a sinner. You can't go to the next step until you realize that you are a sinner. And, and like I did, I had to have to look at, I have to look at myself in the mirror and say, you are addicted to approval. I'm your pastor. I am telling you that I had to face being addicted to approval. And I, I, and I wanted to be accepted in, in, those, in those early years of preaching the gospel. And, I'm, and I, I got a hoop. I got, to, I got to do it like everybody else doing it. And I got to figure out how to get their approval. And I preached for the loudest shout, even if it pour somebody's emotions up. Thank God I'm free, but I did have to recognize, dude, just because you're in the pulpit doesn't mean that you're problemless. You got issues too. The deception is that the man in the pulpit don't have issues. That joker got more issues than anybody. <laughs> That's why he has to make sure he's, he's with God. <laughs> so be careful when you come ask me questions. Pastor, you know, I, I, got, I, got a, I got a problem with, you know, my wife always asking me questions, and then I try to talk to her, and I end up in an argument. What do you think I ought to do? Man, I got the same problem. What you doing? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Let's take notes. Let me see what you're doing. I'll tell you, and we see which one works. Well, I'll meet you here next week. Let's see what works. See, I can rock with somebody like that because I, I, I have an issue with somebody who ain't never been through nothing and acting like he's flawless and perfect. How you going to tell me something? You don't know what I'm talking about. You can't even relate with me because you act like you're just so holy and thou and so perfect that I can't even talk to you. I can't talk to you at all because you ain't got no issues. Your children are angels. Your finances are plentiful. You have no problem. Your wife is Mrs. Submitted. She shows up, leave it to Bieber, Mom. With an apron on and say, hello, Ward. What would you like for dinner tonight? I can't talk to you. And the reason why you can't get men and women of God to act like that is because they have seen what happens to other ministers who wouldn't please. And their approval addiction kept them that way. 
You know, you're a pastor, you should be smiling all the time. Well, I don't smile all the time. <laughs> you should want to counsel me. I don't. <laughs> Ooh, what kind of pastor are you? A real one, one who's delivered from approval. I know how to say no. No is a complete sentence. <laughs> Pastor, I know you're busy, but no, I'll get your butt out of the way. I'm busy. Move. <laughs> I had to get free from that. And congregations kill their pastors and get a new one and start working on killing him and get another somewhere. No, no. Oh, you ain't killing me. <laughs> Approval addiction is the foundation to that. Now, it doesn't, be, doesn't mean be mean and all that other kind of stuff. We, we, we always grow in love and operate in love, but you, you've got to speak the truth in love. You've got to be honest, and you can't be afraid to say no. And it may disappoint sometimes, but... You, you know, you let God, let me say something to some of you. Some of y'all got too many people in your life. Some of you don't have enough room for any more friends. And that's okay. But when you're in, when you're in approval addiction, you will just keep on bringing more people in, even if it's just tearing you apart because you don't want to disappoint anybody. I had somebody real famous, really, really famous, came to me and said, I need you in my life. I said, I'm so sorry. I have too many people in my life, and I don't want to hurt you, but I, please forgive me. I, 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 I have to say no. And Ava's was a little bitter, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, mm-hmm. Because <laughs> I just said a complete sentence, no. Try it. Let's, let's all say that complete sentence together. Come on, come on. No. It sounds good. Say it again. No. You got a lot of places you can use that sentence. But you won't be able to use it if you're an addict to approval. So that's number one, recognize you have a problem. Number two, work on improving your self-esteem and self-worth. That's where it comes from. So you, what can I do to improve my self-esteem? We're at church. Why are we talking about self-esteem? Because it's an issue. On Wednesday night, we're teaching people how to grow emotionally, emotional maturity, because it's an issue. Because if you allow your emotions to govern your life, you'll end up shooting somebody you'll end up doing something you didn't think you would ever do because of your, the emotional immaturity that's really lurking in the body of Christ. That we go around and we know how to say spiritual stuff, but we're immature emotionally. That simply means we, we allow our emotions to dominate our decisions. So how do I improve my self-esteem? How do I work on my self-worth? Let me give you a couple of little... Uh, suggestions here. Number one, this is practical, very practical, but write a list of the things that you, that you admire about yourself. Some people, I ain't got time to write. Now, sometimes you need to write stuff down. It gives you a chance to think about it, look at it, but write a list of some things that you like about you, a list of things you admire about you. It's okay. You're going to see one or two things. You're going to see, I was able to write some things I admire by myself, or you're going to see, I really don't like me. <laughs> wow. Second suggestion, stop being a people pleaser. Stop being a people pleaser. Number three, don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. 
because there is no growth while you're in your comfort zone. The only time you can grow is on the outside of your comfort zone. So locate your comfort zone, step outside of it, and grow. <laughs> Number four, stop comparing yourself to others. In fact, let me share this scripture with you, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 in the NLT, 2 Corinthians 10 and 12 in the NLT. Stop comparing yourself to others. Stop comparing yourself to the magazine ad. Stop comparing yourself to the, to the billboard. Stop comparing yourself to somebody else's house and somebody else's car and somebody else's whatever. Stop comparing yourself. God did something awesome with you. He made you authentically you. He says in verse 12, oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as the standard of measurement. How ignorant. <laughs> the Bible says how ignorant it is for you to compare yourself amongst yourselves using one another as a standard of measurement. When grace is that standard of measurement, and he's already given you a standard of measurement, and you reduce that high standard in exchange for measuring yourself amongst yourself. Don't do that. Don't do that. Who's to say, I'm going to be successful if I can get up to that standard. Wait, 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 no, no, not necessarily. If you work hard at trying to achieve another standard that you see while you ignore what God wants you to do, you may actually be, be, be taking a decrease there because God's like, no, I didn't wire you for that. I wired them for that. I wired you for this. So you think by getting up there where they are that you are now successful when in fact the success comes from fulfilling the will of God for your life. Real success is, is accomplishing what God wants you to do and, and how God wired you, and you done got deceived in thinking that real success is being like that. He said, how ignorant. How ignorant. You think somehow that if you can get a six-pack and some pecs and get your biceps to separate from your triceps, that your wife, your wife going to like you more? You come in there, think you're ready to impress her? She's like, what have you done? Where's my one-pack? Where's my little cutie one-pack? You got rid of, I want my one-pack back. And you think like, what? What is it? Are we supposed to be impressed with the exact same thing that impresses somebody else? And then men put this, this pressure on themselves to be something that the general public says is acceptable, and your wife like you just like you are? Man, your, life, your wife loved Big Waldo getting in that bed, and that, that bed sinking over there and just rolling over to the side. She loved that boy. Come on, baby, big boy, come on. <laughs> now, you done lost all that weight, and the bed won't go down no more, and her little crease done got all messed up. She can't hear you walk in the bedroom no more because <laughs> And then the woman done looked at some ad and done lost all the weight. Coming in and look like a science project hanging on a... Husband reached over to hug and he slapped himself. And he looking like, baby, well, what, 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 what you do? Well, I saw this magazine, and I, I thought you would just love this, so I went on this diet. He says, stop. 
stop, I feel like I'm sleeping with air. <laughs> well, baby, what do you want? I want Big Mama back. Don't say it, don't say it, don't you say it, don't you say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. That's it. Number five, number five, number five, number five. Improving your self esteem, your self worth, forgive yourself for your past thoughts of yourself. Accept that you used to judge yourself and others harshly. Forgive yourself for your past thoughts of yourself. You remember those harsh thoughts that you had about you? Ain't no good. I ought to be ashamed of myself. I can't believe I let them down like this. I just ain't worth nothing. Forgive yourself of those past harsh thoughts of yourself. Number six, this is so important. Six, you want to improve your self-esteem? You want to improve your self-worth? Set boundaries in your relationships. Set boundaries in your relationships. This is a way of not letting others control or take advantage of you. Set boundaries. Even in your marriage, I set a boundary. You are not allowed. I won't allow you to say these things to me about me. I have boundaries. You can't call me a B just because you hear everybody else calling their wife one. That is my boundary. You, I, I will not allow that. I set boundaries. And you can't disrespect me. I'm your husband, and right now I'm the only one you got, and I set a boundary. You will not disrespect me. Well, what you going to do? And then the door slams. Bam. Let me know when you're ready to do what I got to do. I got boundaries. Set boundaries. Set boundaries between you and your kids. I have boundaries between me and my kids. I love them. They love me. But we have a boundary. You can't say this stuff to me. Or you be talking to yourself. Now, that doesn't mean you set boundaries. And if you break them, I'm going to bust you up. Now, now, but that ain't. No, 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 no. You, you are emotionally mature. But you have to set boundaries on how you expect for people to treat you. Or you just will allow them to treat you any kind of way. Set boundaries between in your marriage, between you and your husband, between you and your kids, between you and your friends, between management and, and labor, between set boundaries. No, 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 we can't do this. I like, how, I like how my mama do it. Kathy, remember mama saying this? She said, I'm the mama. I had you. You didn't have me. She's like stating the obvious, but she's just trying to make it, make it very clear to us. I'm the mama. Yes, ma'am. Just setting those boundaries again. That I don't care how old you are. I'm still the mama. There ought to be something that comes with that. There ought to be a level of respect that comes with somebody who's willing to set boundaries. Do you have boundaries in your life? Or does approval addiction take you so far you don't even know? Like, you don't have any boundaries, you know? That's what approval addiction does. There are no boundaries at all. Whatever I have to do to get you to approve of me with no boundaries. Mm-mm. Nope, not willing to do that. 
not willing to just do anything so you can be pleased with me. Uh-uh, not doing it. Well, pastor, if you would just hoop a little bit more and be like such and so, such and so, such and so, such and so, then maybe the church will fill up. I'm not going to do that. My boundary is I am limited to being who God made me to be. Are you willing to set boundaries in your life? Yeah. We train people how we want them to treat us. And when you have allowed a man to mistreat you without any boundaries, you have trained him to treat you that way. You stay there because you think this is your last hope ever, and you got to do whatever you got to do to keep him. And then the man going around talking about his sheep or the keeper. And that may be true, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that. And then the consequences of that comes, and then you're trying to figure out, well, what happened? You keep letting, you keep letting your wife disrespect you and, and, and just do all kinds of stuff. You train her to, to treat you like that. See, we spend so much time, we, well, what scripture are you going to next? No, I'm trying to talk to you about how to live. We know how to do church. We don't know how to do life. I'm trying to show you how to do life. I'm trying to show you how to live life when you wake up in the morning and all throughout the day and how you carry yourself and how you treat one another. Well, I want the glory to fall. It's falling right now. <laughs> Too much church plan. I, 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 I'm not doing that. I would rather quit and let somebody else take this thing and do what you need to do and send me somewhere where I can talk to somebody who just wants Jesus. I ain't doing that. Because I got to stand before God. And I got to give an account of everything I did in this body. And hopefully I'll be able to stand before God and say, yeah, it was messy, God. But boy, the end was better than the beginning, wasn't it? And that's what you can say. Your, end, your beginning might have started off real bad, but oh, you got the grace of God, and oh, you got the new measurement, and oh, you got the Holy Ghost, oh, and you got understanding, and I tell you, your end is going to be better than your beginning, praise God. Somebody shout about that. My end is going to be better than my beginning. Number seven, celebrate your wins. Celebrate your wins. Like when you, when you faced your fears. Like when you found yourself having great self-talk to you. Celebrate your wins. When you built a boundary and Waldo with his good hair and now you're going to have a child. Your baby going to have good hair because Waldo had good hair. And you celebrated your wins because you built a boundary and you said, I don't care how good Waldo's hair is, he can't be calling me them names. Say, I'm Say tell yourself, well, I'm proud of you for doing that. And believe it or not, there's some other Waldos out there. Now, they ain't got good hair like Waldo's, but there's some other Waldos out there. Celebrate your wins. And then finally, this is a big one. Let go of negative people. <laughs> you, you, you're trying to build up your self-worth. You're trying to build up your value. Let go of negative people. And all of us know somebody that it's, it ain't even two minutes before they done got negative. You know, if you work real hard, you can probably find something wrong with anybody and everything and every church. I don't know what it is about folks. Well, well the Lord, <laughs> well, the Lord lead me to another church. <laughs> yeah, you, you ain't heard from God since you got baptized. What you talking about? 
Lord, lead me to another church. As if somehow or another you're going to find the perfect church. What's that? Oh, oh where a tap at? I can't think of it, but it says this. is Just find the good. Just, just find something good about something. Speak good instead of negative. You can speak negative, but, 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 but choose to speak good. Choose to be positive. Choose to, uh, you know, I, I could be negative here, but uh, speak the best. What's that? Can you help me? What's the, speak the good, the best. Be the best. <laughs> what? What? Believe the best. There you go, Tabby. You want to come out here and finish this? <laughs> believe the best. Choose to believe the best. I can choose to believe the best. And, and, and seriously, in reality, there's some really raunchy things, and you have to work real hard to find a best to believe, but choose to believe the best. Somebody say, did you hear about such and so, such and so, such and so? You know, I just choose to believe the best. Okay? Yeah, I heard about it, but I, I just choose to believe the best. They'll be all right. Everybody's been growing. I don't know what stage of growth they're in, but I choose to believe the best. They'll be fine. You got to get rid of the negative people. Some of y'all hanging around too many negative people. And some of that stuff is becoming a part of your everyday life. You'll be all right. Ask God to bring you around the right people. Ask God to bring the right people into your life, somebody that's going to edify you, not somebody that as soon as you, you know, you, you know you got to get with them, so you feel like, oh, my God, I got to get myself ready for what they're going to say and who they're going to talk about. That'll build up your self-esteem. Uh, well, number three, I'm giving you ways to be free from approval addiction. I just gave you eight little pieces for working on improving your self-esteem and self-worth. Having people who accept and love you for who you are can help build up your self-esteem. Ways to be free from approval addiction. Having people who accept and love you for who you are, it can help you feel less dependent on the approval of others because you're surrounded by people who love you for who you are. So you're not out there seeking somebody's approval because you've got people around you who love you for who you are. And everybody in here needs to hang around somebody who loves you for who you are. They already know you like that. They already know you slow as a snail. So if y'all got to leave at 3.30, you say, uh, what time y'all got? Three, th uh, 2.55. <laughs> they love you for who you are. <clears throat> and then not only setting boundaries help with the self-esteem, but it helps you to be free from addiction. So let me have, say, say one more point about setting boundaries. Learning to say no to things that do not align with your values and beliefs can help you feel more in control of your life and less dependent on the approval of others. That's so important. Say no to the things that don't align up with your values. Say no to the things that don't line up with your beliefs. That'll help out a whole lot. As I was studying this, there was a a little poem I put together is, and I think it speaks to the freedom of approval addiction. It says, changed by the need for acceptance, we live in a fear of rejection's wrath. Our worth depended on others' opinions, a cycle of seeking their path. But true freedom lies in self-acceptance, embracing our unique identity. No longer needing others' validation, we break free from this capacity. In captivity. We learn to trust our own intuition, to follow our hearts and our dreams, no longer held back by others' expectations. We soar to new heights, or so it seems. 
For when we break free from approval addiction, the world becomes a brighter place. We see ourselves in a new light and embrace life with a newfound grace. So let us break free from this chain and embrace our true selves with pride. For in doing so, we find freedom and a life without limits or divide. Father, I ask that you will come into all of our lives and the space that we occupy. Help us, for we will surely need your help in this. But we submit ourselves to you. We can't do it without you. Take us, Lord, down this path. Take us into this journey of being delivered from approval. Help us to desire only your approval and that when you approve of us, not only will you be pleased, but even others will be pleased. We need you. Help us to accept who you've made us and how you're developing us. We need you. The steps that we're going to take today and the attacks and the temptations to be validated by those things because we doubt our own value, to that we say we need you. And Lord, I know if we have you, everything's going to be all right. If you're here today, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe, maybe somehow approval addiction stopped you from making that decision. Maybe somebody wasn't going to be pleased with your decision to finally get saved. And yet maybe you've changed your mind today. Maybe the Holy Spirit's ministered something to you where you can step free from needing somebody's approval to get saved, to get born again. Well, I want to I wanna help you out this morning. If you can make it out of your seats to this altar, We'll pray with you. We'll show you how to get saved. We'll show you what you need to do to allow Jesus to come into your life as Lord and personal Savior. You don't have to stay the same. So if you're here today and you're not born again, if you're not absolutely certain that when you die today or if you were to die today, if you're not absolutely certain that you would see Jesus you make the decision to give your heart to him today. The only people who go to hell are those who reject Jesus. Don't reject him. Invite him to be your Lord and personal Savior. Secondly, if you're here and you've been saved, but something's happened between the relationship between you and God, it's, it was disengaged in the midst of a trouble. It was disengaged in the midst of pain. It was disengaged with, with, with some emotional trauma you had to go through. And yet you're here. Yet you're here. Rededicate yourself to him. Re-engage that relationship with him. Come before God today with a commitment and a devotion to him that'll be greater than any devotion or commitment in your life. And thirdly, if you're here and you've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, now is that time. Now is that time. And last but not least, 
If God's calling you to join this church, World Changes Church International, if you de if you determine today that this is the place called there, there I will sustain you. There I will meet you. There I will feed you, is what he said to Elijah. Don't, don't, don't waste another minute. Don't waste another day. Connect with the place that God has summoned you to be. And don't allow approval, addiction to derail that path. I've given to you four things, an opportunity to get born again, to recommit yourself to the Lord, to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and to join this church. What say ye? How will you respond today? If that's you in any of those areas, would you please get your Bibles, your personal belongings, and join me right down here. Jesus is the